you know, I might. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, <laughs> it's Conspiracy Wednesday. <laughs> and it's time for the good news, the bad news, and the other shit. Oh, That's right, I'm not lying. Oh, come on. Man. But, uh, uh, nah, nah, nah. All right, y'all. It's the good news, the bad news, and other shit. Now, I don't know about people, but I watch the presidents. Okay. First thing first. Right, here we go. State of the Union address. Okay, does anybody watch the State of the Union address? Uh, I did. Nope. Okay, Mark. I'm embarrassed to say my boyfriend watched and I was playing with my children and doing the mom thing. That sounds like you did the right That's stuff. <laughs> I don't know what Mark said. First of all, okay, you guys, historically, okay, we, we got to put it in context because that's the whole idea. The State of the Union address, you notice, is given by the president. So he's talking about what's the state of the country. In general, it's a dog and pony show. Historically, that's what it is. It's never been a total fact mission presentation. It's the president giving almost like, and historically it's like a pep talk. So it's almost always bullshit. Okay? No offense. <laughs> I don't, whether it's Bush or Obama, they paint a rosy picture because it's the state, and because they have to imply that because they're in charge, it's the State of the Union. It's wonderful. It's the State of the Union. I like that. So I'm glad I was playing with my children. So you really, so that's why when people say, Ma, are you going to watch it? I say, yeah, but you have to stand. Not totally. Because I, I gag after a while. I, hate, I don't care. I and I'm equal. People tell you, no. But Mario, see, I, like I said, I gave Bush a hard time. I give Obama the same thing. It's, it's the too, same yeah. thing. It's too staged. It's yeah. the same thing, you guys, when you really watch it. It feels like it's staged. Yeah. Right. And so yesterday was the State of the Union, and he talked about how wonderful everything was. And I still was going, I always have this, maybe we're not in the same place. Because, you know. <laughs> Man, I see Occupy Wall Street people, you know, taking over. And, you know, certain when you have certain movements that grow out of people's discomfort with government, the first thing I look is the unifying things. I don't, people talk about the Tea Party, but I go, it still represents grassroots people's frustration with government. When you look over at Occupy Wall Street, when I, some of my people, friends that are more conservative than I, we always say, there are certain things we have in common. We still want certain things. We want the best of these things. The question is who we're believing in to do this for us, really. We really <laughs> want the same stuff. Like, even I'm a strong anti-war leftist, but you know I would protect the hell out of my troops, and I would damn sure give them health care and mental benefits that never expired. Okay, and I would protect your children. And I'm an anti-war person. So, and a lot of the anti-war people feel the same as me. So remember, we do try to unify here a little bit. That's the difference here. Yeah, it's not Even though it's radical. a conspiracy. Yeah, it's But not. there are some conspiracies. Now, one of the conspiracies, you guys, <laughs> I just got to throw it out, is the relative imploding of the opposition to the president's candidacy. People are saying, it, the conspiracy folks are saying the conspiracy is that there is no Republican candidate. That Obama is sort of, there is no, they're making it look like there's a, there is going to be. Uh, idiots. But it's really clear cut. He's going to win. There is no candidate. And the Republicans fumble around going, is it Mitt or Newt? Neither of whom has ever shown the ability to win the presidency. So, the first thing is people say, is it a conspiracy that the president is running against almost nobody and that he has record monies? Okay. And remember, he's raised record funds. Is that a conspiracy yep. or is that just something? Well, the truth, the truth. I, I'm going to say this kind of tongue-in-cheek. I know, Mark, because you know, Mark, I know. Mark, I'm trying to tread light. You, you see know, I am, Mark. I don't know if I want to tread on American politics, although I'm a, I love watching it. It's a great form of entertainment. No. <laughs> see, 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 Mark, see, Mark is cynical, too. I see some cynicism. I, I look at the situation like this, and I'll say a couple of things. The, the Occupy Wall Street movement, I'm saying this from an outsider, you know, coming from Canada and seeing the U.S., from the outside. Uh, and the Occupy Wall Street thing to me is all about 
although they never really established a goal, which I think was their big problem, but they really want somebody to be held accountable for what happened with that housing crisis, because the housing crisis is what drove the big recession here. That housing crisis, because of the financial systems in other parts of the world, and especially in Canada, where I'm from, could never happen. It would never be allowed to happen because we have, in Canada, for example, oversight of the financial industry. The banks are regulated. It could never happen like it's happened here. You know, that's one of the big controversies, Mark, too, is that whole how that happened. Yeah. And also the fact that uh, that a number of the same people that are kind of pointed to in this these things are part yeah. of the Obama cabinet yeah. Yeah. and a group of advisors. Yeah. How <laughs> anybody, and, and it was interesting, I watched that, that speech last night, and the one, the one thing I found interesting was Obama said he was appointing, uh, you know, state attorneys general to now investigate what happened there. I think it's a little late. But I think with the Occupy Movement, they want those people going to jail. They want people being held accountable for what they did. And I think that's reasonable. That's going to be tough. Well, that's part of the issue. People aren't held accountable. There's, you know, when you talk to people about money, and this is amazing because I have access to accountants and some very smart people. And when you sit down and have a beer, yeah. none of them have an idea what the hell happened. And mm -hmm. you, and you can, and it's amazing to the degree of the professionals out there that sort of think they have an idea, yeah. but when they're really sitting there drinking with you, they know they got screwed, but you know what they all say? When you're in the game, you got to go with the game. Yeah. This is the way the game rolls, Mario. This is the way the money flows. You don't mess with the game. I think what the people are saying <laughs> is that, <laughs> is that you have, the, the people are saying it's, it's kind of the ultimate representation, this is my own personal opinion, of that top 1% greed it comes down to greed <laughs> exactly and they did things that were illegal they did things that misled you know the average middle american homeowner that kind of stuff and that's what they did i mean that's that's the fact In 2005 i was doing mortgage loans i was selling mortgage loans <laughs> love this <laughs> 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 She was really good at it. We were refinancing people with a business card yeah. and a stated income. I mean, like what you yeah. said with their lack of regulation. Well, Mike, my, my, I asked my accountant about this. My accountant said to me, he said, listen, Mario, here you go, and money is flowing like the ocean. Are you going to be the one to say, hey, please stop this? Okay. He says, that's what's happened. He says, everybody ducked their head and took their piece of the pie. He says, that's exactly what happened. And it was it was the trickle-down theory where the trickle was actually coming. So everybody who knew how lined up to get this trickle. Mark, I got to ask you this because, you know, Canadians have a, their own history in terms of defense, military. Different point of view being Canadian in terms of defense. We pointed out that the U.S., 2010, $689 billion in military spending. The U.S., the nearest country in military spending was China, $114 billion. Don't believe me, look it up. It's there and Google it yourself. Countries by military spending. The U.S. outspends the entire world combined. <laughs> I believe it. And military spending. They're crying the blues now because they're talking about cutting back to $654 billion. With armies everywhere, drones. What they said was 7,000. This is not my report. This is what they released. Mm -hmm. 7,000 drones over Afghanistan. And you'd, we say if they say 7,000, it's 15,000. Yeah. Yeah. But it's 7,000. How, how do the Canadians look? And how do you, or how do you look? Well, you got to represent to them. I'm sorry. You have to well, represent. And, and that military spending in a country whose philosophy on spending for the military is exactly the opposite. Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's exactly the opposite right now. We okay. Have a, we have a conservative government in Canada right now. Um, and uh, under uh, Stephen Harper is the prime minister. And okay. He's, he's actually increased a lot of military spending. And, and people in Canada are kind of scratching their head as to why. Because traditionally we've been a peacekeeping yes, military. Yes, right. We'll go into you know, right. Kosovo, Syria, all of that stuff. And, you and do your, you Rwanda. contribute your part to the international yeah. efforts. We didn't go to Iraq. Uh, we're in Afghanistan. I think Canada's sacrificed more troops on second only to the U.S. So we're there, you know. But it, it's not being a military or, or having a, a really strong military is not part of the Canadian identity. It's not a big part of what Canada is all about. And uh, we don't tend to get attacked, although we've had an awful lot of close calls with all this terrorism that's gone on since 9-11. We've had our own issues up there with that, and we've been lucky we've caught them. 
um, to this point. Um, but uh, I don't know, that's a tough one because I know the U.S. has a long history of, of military involvement and that kind of thing, and because of their power, because of their size, they do tend to get involved in in you know in in conflicts and, and and kind of policing they'll go in where and I blame it a lot of it you know with Iraq for example you right. a lot of it on the United Nations why did they wait so long right you know that a lot of the stuff that, that the U.S. to their credit I think going into some of these places is because the U.N. failed to act in a lot of cases the Canadians again so different um, you know in terms like he Let's said p p p yeah right right it's not healthcare that's another one. <laughs> That's another one. Well, I tell you what. Let's go take a look, you guys. You know, I gather I like to show you things. So let's go take a look at RT.com, former Russian television. You know, we go to foreign press. One reason we show foreign press is that they don't, um, they don't um, flag us. They don't flag They're us. Free. They're free. They don't usage. flag us. It's a free usage. So they, here's promotion. a new piece that just came out from RT. Remember, I watch it with you. I don't watch it ahead well, of time. As the U.S. presidential race picks up pace ahead of November's vote. Barack Obama is trying to ratchet up support for re-election. He's just delivered his annual State of the Union address, where he made new promises of change ahead. Let's uh, cross live to Washington now, where Artie's Gane Chichikan has been listening in. Uh, Gane, he stepped into the White House pledging change. Is there any skepticism that it's still his motto three years on? This was President Obama's last State of the Union address before he runs for re-election. So his goal was to highlight his achievements and lay out his promises. As far as domestic policies, his speech was full of heartfelt success stories about the economy and about jobs creation. It was at times very touching, but there is a lot of skepticism among Americans right now. Social inequality in America is now at a level unseen since the Great Depression. The top 1% of wealthiest in the country are making a killing, while middle classes is shrinking dramatically, and that gap is getting wider. American jobs are being outsourced to other countries. President Obama's State of the Union speech was motivational, full of, full of good intentions, but the fact that almost all his major economic initiatives got bogged down in Congress, like the Jobs Act that he put forward last year, is giving uh, a sense to many that he might be saying all the right words, but uh, they may not be necessarily followed by deeds. Uh, Gane, he, he I think he gives wonderful speeches. US remain a key uh, power <laughs> player in the world. The best What's best the uh, roadmap seen. he's no, laid out for Washington's foreign well. policy? But so what? Wow. I think I well, Karen, all we right. have to remember in general that, that all right, we just <laughs> doesn't matter who's in office right now. Whoever's sitting in that president's chair could come up with a cure for cancer, and the other side would find something wrong with it. There you go. That's because exactly that's the it. game. Yeah. That's what's wrong with it. That's it. You know, and that's what I, I think to interject on this political conversation. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and it not like because our society, we kind of um, foreshadow different parts, like the Penn State. Uh, situation to me was tragic because there was no good way out of that and it was like part of what it was in back in the day and I think our government has the residual is it's a good old boys club these people aren't going to turn over their best friend or partner in crime it just it's not a situation or era of was the mindset that would do that but it's like that's what we have in our government it's like the dirty stories we don't know anything about and, and what's going on actually is the good old boys club in Washington. Too. It always it, has it, been. It just ain't a Penn State. You know what I mean? You know.